Lockheed engineers install their lift fan system into the X-plane, hopefully transforming it into that hybrid of the skies, a vertically landing jet. While it remains unproven, the concept behind their unique lift fan system exudes engineering elegance. Two columns of air instead of one in the Harrier balance the plane's descent. One column is the engine exhaust directed downward. The other column is created by a lift fan connected to the engine by a drive shaft. The fan takes in air from above and blasts it out below. It's an ingenious system, but in practice, it requires a symphony of moving parts. Lockheed has chosen a very complex solution. If something goes mechanically, catastrophically wrong during the hover, you have very, very little time to get out. A former Royal Navy pilot with Harrier combat experience in the Falklands and Bosnia, Simon Hargraves will attempt the first hover in the Lockheed X-plane. He spent years in preparation. Still, there's no question, he's about to take a ride on the wild side. Nobody's ever tried to model a propulsion system that's quite as complex as this, is quite as integrated as this. So there may be some areas there where the airplane doesn't respond exactly as I'm expecting. The vertical landing tests will start over a hover pit, 10 feet deep and covered by a steel grate. The hover pit is designed to minimize the chance the engine will suck in its own hot exhaust. Hot gas ingestion is a familiar danger to Harrier pilots. If the exhaust used to float the plane somehow enters the engine's air intake, the engine will start to choke. Venting the hot gases out the side of the hover pit provides some protection. This doesn't go well. Here we go. 70%. Hargrave holds steady 20 feet in the air. At 35,000 pounds, it's the heaviest fighter ever to hover. <laughs> wow. The lift fan performs without incident and produces 1,500 pounds more thrust than predicted. That was great. That was incredible. Let's do that again. Incredible. After nearly two years of struggling to keep up with Boeing, the Lockheed team now has reason to display their usual abundance of self-confidence. We've never had a doubt in our minds at any point in this program that this is the right type of airplane and propulsion system, and we've felt very sorry for the competing team against us. <laughs> I never felt sorry for him. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> While the lift fan works, Lockheed still hasn't accomplished the tricky mid-air maneuver called conversion. Going from level flight to vertical landing with its complicated dance of moving parts. The same morning Lockheed lifts off, Boeing plans a dramatic demonstration of its own vertical lift system. The company's second X-plane has been flown across the country. The new proximity to Washington decision makers and lobbyists doesn't hurt. But the real advantage is invisible. The air at sea level has greater density than at the high altitude location of Edwards Air Force Base. Thicker air means better engine performance. BMS, talk to me. In this test of its direct lift system, Boeing hopes to outdo Lockheed. Test pilot Dennis O'Donoghue will start in level flight, 
slow the plane down to nothing and hover. His slow speed will make the wings useless, and a failure of the lift system will mean the plane falls from the sky. To give O'Donoghue a chance to eject, Boeing has conducted its early tests at higher altitudes, gradually working lower and slower. Now, after 43 flights, Boeing is ready to go all the way to attempt zero airspeed. I've got butterflies. <laughs> O'Donoghue's family is among the spectators of today's historic event. The boys are really excited, too. I think Dennis slept because he knew he needed to. The boys slept. I didn't sleep a wink. <laughs> Look at Daddy's airplane. Dad! Yes! 200 feet above the runway, O'Donoghue slowly decelerates to zero airspeed and hovers. A 28,000-pound airplane hangs frozen in the sky. On this day, the Boeing X-plane hovers four times, once for two and a half minutes, and demonstrating rock-solid control, performs a perfect 360-degree turn. Wonderful. Brendan said it was better than Star Wars. <laughs> so, and for him, that's a lot. <laughs> One month later, Boeing is ready to make history. If it works, its X plane will become the first new fighter since the Harrier to transition from conventional flight to landing vertically. For this risky mission, Boeing will also use a hover pit to reduce the chances of hot exhaust being ingested into the engine during the landing. To increase the margin of safety, Boeing engineers have removed some exterior parts to lighten the X-plane's weight. Some critics will cry foul, but Boeing will respond that its new design, which it didn't have time to build but will submit to the JSF as its final proposal, is 1,500 pounds lighter. Dennis O'Donoghue is in the cockpit again, while flight test conductor Howard Gofus will closely monitor the mission from the ground. Now, there's fewer unknowns. We know we can do it. We know we've been there. We know what we've seen so far. But we're still only one failure away from having a really bad day. Here, coming to 50 feet. Here we go. Closing in over the pit, the Boeing X-plane comes to a stop and begins a slow descent. If disaster strikes, O'Donoghue is now too low to eject. Suddenly, the controllers spot trouble. Invisibly, the engine has ingested hot gas from the lift nozzles and loses power. O'Donoghue feels the bottom dropping out, but it's too late to abort. Twenty feet and only seconds from the ground, the gas dissipates, and the engine gains enough thrust to touch down safely. Excellent landing. 
he's down on the ground and we realize it and uh and so there's the you're in the quandary for that split second okay we just did our first vl what happened <laughs> over by the runway no one is aware of the close call reviewing the data and believes a choice made to increase safety the hover pit may be causing the problem there's almost no crosswind to clear the pit of exhaust. Hot gas may be collecting and bouncing upward into the air. 